What is up YouTube? Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna provide an introduction to graph-based exploration slash analytics. Uh, I'm gonna do it uh, using a tool called Silinx Motif. Uh, it's a graph visualization uh, tool slash library. Uh, you can easily use to provide uh, insights to big graph problems. I will cover a part of analytics called graph-based analytics, uh, which is also in parallel very powerful in terms of determining insight. Uh, if someone is new to my channel and if you got value out of this video, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, it really helps with the algorithm and helps me promote to people like you. Let's try to understand a few key concepts. Uh, what exactly a graph is? So graph is like a special data structure and it is composed of like vertices and uh, edges. Uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, all these different vertices are the nodes, the circles are being connected to different edges to each other. So that's what represents a graph. Uh, it is best to understand by an example and that's why I kind of pasted this picture from the internet uh, on showing uh, how a social network graph looks like. Uh, basically, you can see all these people, how they are kind of connected uh, and how like the direction is, like they're connected to each other and uh, who is kind of more popular. You can always figure out a relation how a single person can uh, be connected to each other. So that's what an example of a social network graph is. Uh, in the real world, it would be like super huge where all these, uh, like all the billions of people are kind of connected. Another key concept would be, uh, what exactly is graph-based analytics? For a simplicity stake, uh, let's quickly check out um, what are the examples I pulled out from Neo4j. So for example, uh, a graph based analytics, like in the simplest fashion would be, you can just check out the, the different relationships. And uh, uh, for example, this guy has two friends, uh, uh, they kind of like sushi, they go to a restaurant in sushi in New York. Uh, it is quite likely this guy is also fond of sushi. So these kind of uh, relationships can trigger a lot of these insights. Cases also include supply chain management, uh, where we have this uh, the big the big global shipping industry, where all this data of products kind of being managed and going from uh, the locations to different locations. So it kind of generates all this data. And uh, in fact, there are a lot of sensors in place uh, uh, in the ships to track a lot of things. Uh, so maybe this becomes like one of the biggest use case of using graph analytics to see the relationship and try to understand the data. Another example would be through uh, customer 360 would be like knowing your customer better. Uh, different companies have this customer data set. They can apply graph analytics to use that. Uh, other things would be applying it on the social network graph. Um, one of the biggest out there, all the, all the billions of people are kind of connected. Um, yeah, so this list is not exhaustive, but yeah, well, a few that came into my mind. Um, the other thing would be, I wanted to show uh, an example, uh, not exactly financial service because uh, Silinx, at Silinx we work with uh, a lot of the blockchain data. So as an example, uh, there's a beautiful article on the tracing the trail of Upbit hack. So basically from time to time, uh, a lot of the hacks kind of happen within the blockchain where the kind of money is transferred. Uh, so that, that's, that's where one of the use cases lies, uh, especially for Silinx where we kind of use uh, all this blockchain uh, transaction data to try to understand how the funds are kind of moving in between from the source and where it's kind of going. So uh, there, there's a lot of like different things involved called mixers or, or different wallets where people kind of uh, use this um, to launder the money, I would say, to avoid the trace. But still with the uh, graph analytics at Silinx, we can easily uh, trace how the data is kind of moving from uh, one place to the other. So for example, as an upbit a, a hacker kind of transfers these to wallets to smaller wallets, they call it mixers, and they mix with, with themselves and kind of, in a way, uh, provide this money to different network of uh, nodes. This would be different wallets. And towards the end, uh, they transfer it to exchange to cash it out. It's pretty impressive how this uh, 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 graph-based analytics uh, can be easily used to understand how the funds are flowing within uh, one place to the other and try to understand how uh, the bad events or like uh, the bad events like upbit hack and how the money is moving around. Uh, uh, feel free to check out the article. I will provide the link in the description. Uh, pretty interesting and uh, they kind of detail it how, how it's happening, uh, how the money is moving uh, with details. So yeah, definitely check it out. Moving on with uh, this graph data exploration and analytics, there are a few challenges uh, to name a few. I've noted it down. Maybe you can check out the uh, the blog post later. Uh, to name a few of them is like the scale when, when the data is at scale, it's, it, it becomes difficult to do the exploration itself because it's like more of a visual way. And then when the data has a high number of dimensionality, uh, it's sometimes becomes sticky which one to choose from and uh, which one to kind of give uh, more weight to. Uh, other things is like sharing something like this is uh, kind of a bit tricky and sharing the d results of this uh, in terms of graph and uh, graph format uh, can um, 
be a bit tricky at the time yeah to quickly cover details on the motif uh you can check out the website but yeah it's it's basically a no code visual interface uh that kind of helps you connect the dots i would say it helps you kind of transform this connected data into like actionable insights let's quickly hop onto the tool itself to use the tool you would need to import the data so as a sample i was thinking to import a simpler database it only has some sample data but the idea was to include a, a different data set i found out in the neo4j database website uh, anyone can just hop onto this link and create their own graphical database and the tool directly easily connects to it uh, so let me try to connect and import the data to, to connect to this graphical database from neo4j which already has the movie data set uh, so the idea is just to use this look the host which where this is deployed the port would be the main default and i created this username and password for me to access this data set so yeah i click on connect uh, it usually will lead me to create a query uh yeah that's the next step i click on yeah i will click on continue so i need to select the database uh, it would be neo4j the default one and then I will need to place a query to extract this uh, data within the platform. So it's basically trying to pull out uh, all the persons who, are, who has acted in uh, the, the corresponding movie. Uh, so after you paste the query, you need to click, click on execute query if, to figure out if it works. So yeah, once it works, it, it points out uh, what kind of things have been imported. 140 nodes, uh, 172 edges for this data set specifically. So I click on continue to import this further. It's going to give you a brief snippet of the nodes and the edges which are in place. I click on import data to get the data onboarded. So once the data is onboarded, it kind of looks like this. Uh, so this is one of the, the one of the styling you can choose, uh, which is like the circular graph, if I'm not wrong, or the co-centric graph, uh, which points out the maximum connections which are here. And then you can align the properties for these nodes. So basically then this graph visualization platform can be used to like figure out the relationships and um, to understand things further. Uh, Specifically, like in, in one of the examples I shared, the upbit hack, uh, it is very interesting to figure out the relationship and uh, how the money is flowing within the graph. A tool like this is very useful in this kind of use case. And yeah, it tries to figure out uh, the relationships. But by default, uh, the data kind of looks like this in concentric layout. Uh, the blue things are the, the nodes and the edges are, are the lines. Um, on the right, there, there are a few other things, uh, such as like you want to provide the legends, you want to do full screen, undo, redo, uh, zoom in, zoom out, or even clear the data set. So simple things like this. On the left, there, there are things that are a bit more in detail. The first thing is the import data. Once you import the data, and you can do like multiple layers of data uh, within this tool. And as in with the tool, you can uh, set the properties, uh, things you want to show uh, aligned to each node. So no node properties would be that. And if you want to show some things aligned to edges, you can. Uh, show something like that and, and it is all like coming from the data set if you click on the name and the title that's what we are interested to show right now uh when uh what, what are the movies and uh, what kind of actors have acted in uh uh in these movies uh there's uh, uh one more uh, really interesting thing uh variable in inspector uh, I, I find it really useful in terms of like when the data is like kind of time series based uh you can move in uh across time and try to understand how the relationships are working uh as as a passage of time so that's the idea. Uh, maybe we, we're gonna try to explore it uh, further uh, in the demo. So moving on to the next part, uh, the next is styles. Within styles, there are a lot of options for you to figure out and that's where like you wanna play around with the data and see how we are connect, kind of connecting the dots. So uh, there are different layout options. Uh, we can do uh, radial to see how the data is flowing. Uh, so for example, let's try to keep it radial for now. and. Uh, Try to see the data in detail. We can change the radius uh, to seg further segregate the data. And it's more on the lay layout thing, but uh, helps with the graph exploration. I will try to keep the node spa spacing a bit bigger to, to see the nodes which are separated further. And then you can provide different types of node styles. The number of connections connected to a dot can signify the high connections. So the size would kind of signify the high connections uh, for the, uh, the node. So you can increase or decrease and set a range. And then you can um, kind of label it out, uh, uh, label things where you want to say, oh, I want to see the name. Yeah, exactly. And I want to see the labels uh, for the nodes, which is name. And the second would be to see title, title of the movie. So basically these are the people which are connected to these titles, which would be the movies. You can also provide the legend colors to see the data uh, in a segregated way, I would say. For example, if I click on the legend base color 
So I can select a, a label across it. So what type of node it is, is going to point out. So yeah, for example, the blue uh, nodes are the actors who have acted in the orange movie. So orange is the movie. So you can see uh, how the data is now segregated and how the knots, uh, the dots are connected. So now it's uh, it's making more sense to me at least. So you can see, for example, uh, in the Matrix movie, the people that kind of worked in. So Keanu Reeves, the main actor, uh, Carrie Ann Moss. Uh, I, I don't remember anyone's name, but yeah, uh, these are the different people's name. And then you can see uh, Keanu Reeves, the same guy who worked in the, the Matrix, kind of worked in like these different movies. The Matrix, uh, the Matrix Reloaded, The Revolution, obviously. Uh, but uh, there are other movies I don't know about. And then you can kind of understand the relationship uh, uh, who like Keanu Reeves worked with uh, like different people in different movies and what are the overlaps and what are the like the degree of the connections uh, things like that and then we can try to explore the variable inspector for example so there are two time-based properties which is available for us to use uh, we, either which is like the bond date for the actor uh, the date of birth for the actor and the other uh, release date of the movie and for more information you can always click over on the question mark to understand uh, what the tool, uh, what what this filter is about, and uh, to play further around, you can do different sets, and you can uh, divide it into further segments, and you can see the how the how the actually the data is kind of moving across time. So one of the earliest movie in this data set uh, was uh, this one, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Interesting, and Jack Nicholson kind of worked in it, and a few other actors, and then you can move this. Um, time series based uh, uh, filter uh, across the variable inspector across time and see how things are moving, how the relationships are kind of flowing across time. You can do it something like this and you can also provide an animation by playing it um, at, at a speed. So yeah, something like this would make sense, uh, especially for the update hack when you wanna see the data across time. But yeah, we can play around with the data so you can see how things are moving and, yeah, and kind of helps you animate and uh, provide further explanation with the data, how the relationships are looking right. So yeah, something like this uh, is now t like making more sense to me at least how the data is flowing. So maybe we can, uh, as, as a small task, we can try to figure out which uh, is the most popular actor um, in this duration. And just by looking at it, uh, not doing any, any, any calculation or anything because, yeah. So maybe we can do a weight on the nodes based on the connection. I think we did it previously as well. For the node styles, I can refine a weightage on the number of connections. So for example, if I increase this, the, the, the node with the highest links should pop up and let's try to just figure out uh, the biggest node out of the box. So you can see as easily uh, someone like uh, Jack Nicholson or Hugo Weaving or Carrie Ann Moss is popular. They are like quite popular. These are the, 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 the actors which have like worked uh, in a single movie. So yeah, uh, out of the box, you can easily see Tom Hanks is quite popular uh, with him working in all these different movies. Uh, pretty interesting to see. So th these are the different movies and you can play around with the data and s uh, try to s like make sense out of it uh, in an easy fashion. And something like this is very easy to explain it to stakeholders. And um, if you're like, a, a further analyzing data and uh, this would be a, a good thing to kind of show it to the stakeholders uh, in a visual fashion and also they can play around with it so that's the idea uh, all right that's it uh, in terms of this video i think we mostly covered the details on the introduction of graph brace exploration analytics uh, using uh, the tool called silings motif uh, feel free to check out the website uh, uh, and the co-founder Timothy and the whole Silings thing, if you are interested. I will leave a few links uh, with the details of the company and the product uh, we're kind of building. Uh, there, are, there, there are other interesting products uh, around uh, blockchain as well. Uh, so feel free to check it out. And big shout out to Timothy. If you found this video to be useful for use, your use case, uh, definitely hit the subscribe button and like this video. And uh, it really helps with the algorithm and really helps me promote my channel. Uh, really looking forward for you to subscribing. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching.